Sometimes, getting into TV can be pretty intimidating with all the settings and different picture modes. Well, in this video, we'll be looking at the Sony X900H TV and go through which picture settings work best for which types of content so that you know what to expect and what these settings actually do for your viewing experience. Hey, I'm Alex, a tester at Ratings.com, where we help you find the best products for your needs. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos or check out our website for the full review. The settings we recommend are just that, recommendations. We use specialized software and colorimeters to try and find the most accurate picture modes out of the box so that we can recommend what we feel works best. That said, you might find the image too dark or too bright depending on the content. Feel free to tweak any of our settings and have fun messing with the TV until you find something that you like best. We'll start by taking a look at the interface. It's a pretty basic interface, and by opening the menu, you'll have a pop-up at the bottom of the screen where you can fidget with some of the picture settings. But the real meat of it all is in the complete menu, which will appear on the side. So now we're going to look at the interface. We'll go over here and open up by pressing the gear button, and you can see all of these little sections here with everything, including a little edit button where you can add or move around different settings so that they're on this quick settings menu, which is this bottom bar down here. When you press the settings button, it brings up the sidebar, and this is where everything is. So most of what we're going to be looking at is in the display and sound, but here you can see there's the watching TV where you can change any channels, preferences, info banners. We also have the display and sound, like I said, where we will be spending most of our time. Network and internet so that you can connect to the internet, so you can use Netflix, all of your apps. Accounts and sign in, this is our account, but you don't need one to run through this TV the apps, which we'll look at after, the device preferences, where you can look at the about, so the firmware, the storage, date, time, things like that. They're not super useful, but you might end up using them. And remotes and accessories for anything Bluetooth that you want to connect. We'll start in the display and sound, where we can look at the picture, screen, sound, and audio output. The picture is where most of the settings for changing what it looks like are going to be. Custom is what we're using here, but you can look and flip through all of them and just see what they all do and how they change things just out of the box. The TV does a good job of explaining what each setting changes, so if there's something you want to know a bit about, just wait for the info window to pop up when hovering over any setting. The Sony X900H uses Android TV, so there are a ton of apps, and with those who use other Android products, we'll find that there are some similarities here and there as well. So we'll go through the apps and features. When you're at any of the screens, you just press the home button on the remote, and it brings you to the Android TV home menu. Here you have everything from your apps. So Amazon Prime, YouTube is all we have here, but we have Netflix, Disney Plus, and the Google Play Store for downloading extra apps. And a Sony bonus offer, unfortunately. But uh, we're going to skip right past that and go into the help, which is actually a very interesting little app. When you load it up, this tells you a whole bunch of little popular topics about how you could use this TV, uh, small little FAQs, questions and answers, things like that. Um, I like the status and diagnostic, where you can actually update your system software, diagnose your TV for any issues. So this will go through if there's any sort of problems with an app, or you downloaded something that's corrupted, it's not working properly. Uh, system information also tells you the software version, the model of your TV, and the serial number and everything. Signal diagnostics will also help to show you for your uh, cable, if you have cable. Uh, and a whole bunch of other small things that are useful, but you might not need to actually get in here. The remote also features voice control that you can use to search within apps or change the inputs, but it doesn't work particularly well for playing with the TV's actual settings. So with the remote, this little button here is the microphone button. You press it and you can say, open YouTube. And there we go. And we can even search, search ratings.com in YouTube. And we have all of these amazing reviews to look at. To start, you'll want to disable all the basic settings, like the auto picture mode or the light sensor settings. 
These can interfere with the brightness of the TV, making it change by itself, which can be distracting or mess with the home calibration. For gamers, there are a few important things to mention. The first is you want to enable game mode in the picture settings tab. This is massively important since it will actually lower the input lag of the TV by as much as 80 milliseconds. While that doesn't sound like much, you will definitely feel the difference during gameplay. So we're going to go back to the regular sidebar here, open up the display, go into picture, and right now we're on custom, which is our typical picture mode. But for gaming or PC mode, what we want to do is put it on either graphics or game mode. So you can see when I switch from photo or one of these other modes into graphics and game mode, the screen actually blacks out. And that's because it's doing some processing in the background. So with either of these two modes, you will be able to get proper 444 on a PC, as well as low input lag. You'll also want to enable HDMI enhanced format in the input section of the TV's picture settings. This will make sure that if you decide to game in HDR, you'll get the full bandwidth of the port you're using. So we're going to go to the HDMI, which is in watching TV, external inputs, HDMI signal format. So here is where you'll find the HDMI signal format where we can turn on the enhanced format. Normally it comes standard when it comes out of the box, but you'll want to switch them all to enhanced format since that lets you do 4K 120 hertz. Even though it doesn't say that here, it does actually work and we will show it to you. As far as the enhanced format versus standard, if you want to, you could just put it on enhanced format, leave it there. It's not going to affect anything negatively. It just gives your computer or the TV more bandwidth. Unfortunately, there have been rumors that the HDMI 2.1 features, such as VRR and ALLM, are no longer coming from Sony. But official sources say that these features are still coming. There is still no confirmation on when this is to be released, but once it does, it will update the review that you can find here. This is disappointing since the TV has been available for almost a year and hasn't received a popular gaming feature to go along with their new console. Even though VRR is still not supported on the console, it's important for us to know whether it would work and how well it would work. While it doesn't support ALLM yet, thanks to the auto picture mode feature of the Sony X900H, you can use certain Sony devices like the PS5 to emulate it, but it's limited only to specific Sony hardware. Otherwise, the TV is able to do 4K 120Hz on your PC or consoles, so there's that at least. Now, we'll take a look at the settings we recommend for people who want to watch movies. For SDR, our recommended picture mode is custom. In our readings, this was the most accurate picture mode out of the box. It's also highly malleable, so we can change virtually any and all settings within this picture mode. So in the display and sound, Picture, we have our picture modes here. So right now it's on graphics, but we recommend custom. This is mostly because we can just totally mess with all the settings. Nothing is locked off from custom. Here's the auto picture mode that we recommend that you turn off and the light sensor, mostly because it just changes the brightness and that can be distracting. In the brightness tab, we have our actual luminance of the panel, the contrast that we recommend keeping at the level that it's at, same with gamma and black level. The Sony X900H also has a local dimming feature called Auto Local Dimming. The local dimming looks great in real content, and it enables the extended dynamic range option. This feature really makes highlights pop and works in tandem with Auto Local Dimming to create a really enjoyable experience. We recommend setting it to high since it doesn't have much blooming and helps to really make those bright spots pop. These other settings here, Auto Local Dimming and Extended Dynamic Range, these are the two that are connected directly to each other. This turns on the local dimming feature, which we recommend on high uh, for both of these settings. When you turn the local dimming off, you can see the screen get darker and the extended dynamic range setting turn off. So keep them both on high if you want to have that local dimming working well. The next thing is the advanced contrast enhancer. This will actually brighten the image. So if you find that it's a little bit too dark, you can use this setting to make it a little bit brighter. Keep in mind though, on dark scenes with bright highlights, it's possible that this setting can actually make the dark spots darker, but the bright spots brighter. So you want to kind of play with this and see what you're most comfortable with. In the Clarity tab, we left sharpness to the default value of 50, which is the neutral setting. Reality creation was left disabled, but you can enable it when watching lower resolution content, as it can help to improve the image quality. Random noise reduction and digital noise reduction were also left disabled, but they can help improve the image quality of low quality videos. 
we don't recommend leaving them enabled as they can cause a loss of fine details and higher quality content. The Clarity tab is where we leave everything standard, sharpness at 50, reality creation we turn off, random digital noise reduction off. The reason we keep them off is because we test usually at the native resolution. In this case, the only reason you would want them on is if you're watching something at a lower resolution or lower quality that you kind of want to upscale a little bit. Like in SDR, the HDR picture mode we recommend is custom. HDR is automatically enabled for the native apps. When you start playing HDR content, there's a small HDR icon that appears in the picture settings menu. Once you start playing HDR content, some of the settings will change automatically, including the brightness, which increases to max. Video signal here is where you can force a different kind of color space, video range, or HDR mode. So we're going to just put HDR 10 on. You can see immediately the colors change on the screen. And in the top right corner, you can see that there is an HDR little icon. Whenever you're playing a game in HDR, whenever you're doing anything in HDR, that will pop up. We recommend leaving these settings to their default settings in HDR. This is because HDR is content that has been reviewed and mastered to look the way the creators intended it. Keeping the default settings in HDR lets you get as close as possible to the intended experience. For HDR to work from external devices, the enhanced format option usually has to be enabled from the HDMI signal format menu for the input you're using. The X900H supports Dolby Vision from native apps and with most external devices. HDR content is usually mastered at 10-bit, which allows for up to 1.07 billion colors. The more colors you can display, the more realistic the image appears, with less banding and more subtle transition in areas of similar color. Dolby Vision content allows for up to 12-bit color. This might not sound like a big difference, but allowing up to 12-bit increases the colors to an impressive 68.7 billion colors. This allows for much finer control over gradations, resulting in a more lifelike image with no banding. There are currently no 12-bit panels, so TVs can't take full advantage of this yet. As with normal HDR content, when you start playing Dolby Vision, some settings change automatically. We recommend leaving these settings as is. There are three picture modes in Dolby Vision, Vivid, Dolby Vision Bright, and Dolby Vision Dark. We recommend Dolby Vision Dark, but the bright setting might be a better option if you aren't watching in a completely dark room. Uh, anything that, is, that says Vision right here, means that it supports Dolby Vision. If your TV says that, it means that it will automatically turn it on. So if I just put something on, open up the settings, you'll see that there is Dolby Vision Dark, Dolby Vision Bright, and Vivid. Lastly, we'll look at some of the motion settings. If you want any motion interpolation, in the Motion tab, you can set Motion Flow to Custom and adjust the Smoothness slider until you're happy with the smoothness of the picture. Keep in mind, adding interpolation can introduce fuzziness or artifacts into the image, so you want to be careful while playing with the setting. You'll also notice a clearness slider, and this turns on the Sony X900H X Motion Clarity feature, which functions like a black frame insertion to clear up moving objects. In the Motion tab, we have the Motion Flow and the Cinemotion, both of which are typically off. However, in this case, I'll turn them on to show you that turning clearness to 1 and smoothness to 1, this is how you turn on X Motion Clarity. Smoothness handles more of the motion interpolation. Clearness makes it darker because it's being more aggressive with its uh, inserting of a black frame. Uh, Cinemotion will only be used if you want to get rid of judder in certain settings. Uh, generally, it's going to be on Blu-rays uh, and, ex and external devices. The thing that separates BFI and X-Motion Clarity is that Sony's technology keeps everything smooth, bright, and clear. Each blink is individually controlled and its duration optimized, while brightness is boosted when needed. Regular BFI just darkens the screen while smoothing out some motion, but Sony is able to keep the brightness high and have the same results. For TV shows, you'll want to follow the same recommendations for movies. And again, feel free to play around depending on the show and see if you prefer a brighter image or some interpolation to smooth out some movement. It's a personal preference if you want some of your favorite shows to be smoother. If you want to know more about motion interpolation, check out this video here. One thing to mention about TV shows, but it also applies to movies, is that the Sony X900H actually has a specific feature called Netflix Calibrated Mode. This is an option that appears when Netflix is open on the TV. We didn't notice any significant differences, but don't be uncomfortable messing with any of the settings to see if you find something you like. So all we need to do is open up Netflix over here. 
pick something that doesn't have Dolby Vision, preferably. Open up the settings and go into the picture settings. And here there is the Netflix calibrated mode. So this is saying that it watches Netflix with originally intended picture quality. We don't really see a huge difference. It blocks out a lot of settings. Um, on certain things, maybe you'll enjoy it, but we recommend the settings that we recommend, which is not the Netflix calibrated mode. For sports, you'll want to use the custom picture mode, which is our recommended picture setting. It's mostly about the color accuracy and white balance being as accurate as possible, since there are no picture modes that will change your experience much by themselves. Something to note for sports use is that sometimes balls or pucks will disappear or be very fuzzy while in motion. A setting the Sony X900H has to help combat that is the motion flow clearness setting. This works like a BFI, but it helps to keep the brightness up due to Sony's X motion clarity feature that is built into the motion flow setting. Technically, to get the full experience, you would need to enable some smoothness, but we don't recommend adding any interpolation to sports since it can create more artifacts that get in the way of the game. So for X Motion Clarity Plus, what we want to do is go back into the picture settings, go down into Motion, open up Motion Flow, put it on Custom, that way we can adjust it as we like. And in order to get proper X Motion Clarity Plus, we put Smoothness on 2 and Clearness on 1. So this enables the black frame insertion, but also keeps the brightness up. Unfortunately for sports, you might not want the smoothness at two, only because it can introduce artifacts. So either have it at one or even better at zero, because that way you'll have a good clarity. And you can either put clearness up even further, but darkening the screen, or even at its maximum. You'll have the most amount of clarity, but you also have a darker screen. If you're planning on using the TV as a monitor, you're able to get proper 444 chroma subsampling. This will make text look clear and smooth, so you'll be able to read comfortably. We've had some issues in the past when running the TV at 4K 120Hz, where even though the text itself was showing proper 444 chroma subsampling, it looked blurry and messy. Some firmware updates have made it significantly better, but getting up close to the screen, you can still see it isn't perfect. The Sony X900H is a great TV, and hopefully we can get an update for VRR and ALLM on the TV in the near future, so we can take advantage of those features for our PC gaming or when the PS5 gets its update for VRR. These recommendations we've made are from our own results from testing with specialized equipment. The best way to tell what settings work for you is to try and mess around with them at your own leisure. Don't be intimidated and just have some fun. So what do you think of those settings? Have you tried them? Let us know what you think below. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. You can check out all of the measurements on our website. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become an insider for access to our latest results first. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.